Our next performers is the. I also read a little bit. They hired the dancers. You are Kade Naisone. You are Kade Naisone. You could Jean Kaul Tasawat. You could Jean Dekina Atleche. Yeah, has to shut the honey. Change your hostility. Helen Sanderson, who did the Dago Satak, a sea hostility cargon Tanya Dia, Helen Sanderson. Hi, that's up. I asked a Jay that go go it, sick, go go it. Helen, go go it. How we? Helen says she's always proud of her Slinkid ancestors. And me being her father, she really appreciates that, the Kaguantans. And so she wants me again to tell you folk that. First of all, I'm very happy to be here. We've been here before. And uh, like I told Pat, I said I'm always proud of my uh, Tlingit ancestry. The late A.P. Johnson was my uncle. Mark Jacob Sr. was another uncle. And Mrs. Charlie Joseph was the younger sister to my grandfather, Nauskiel. And a few years ago, this was made known to me. And uh, I appreciated how much background I had that I didn't know anything about. All I knew was about my uh, Haida ancestry. and. Uh, we are so happy to share this with you folks again. We're getting old, some of us that came here. Originally, it wasn't planned. We wanted to bring our younger ones. They are really good, but due to uh, short notice and uh, shortage of application under the JOM program, they are unable to come. For the last few years, we've been teaching the Haida culture, the dancing and the singing at school. And we find that the little ones adapt themselves uh, faster than they are grown ups. So we've had the Haida Day celebration uh, May 5th. It was a big turnout and a big success. And some of the little ones talked over the f uh, mic, relating some of the Haida stories just perfect, second graders. And I was so proud of them. Sometimes and they are so active. Uh, you don't think they're absorbing anything, but I uh, was very proud to know how much they had learned. They knew all the songs better than some of our old uh, seniors. And uh, we are trying to preserve what little there is left of the Haida culture. This was banned in 1915 when they made the movement to a new site that, that is Heidelberg now. And uh, for that reason, the Haida language was discouraged no practices of the dancing or, or uh, history or anything like that pertaining to the Haida culture. But now we're trying to preserve what little there is left. I'm happy to be here with you folks, and thank you. How are you?
Amiat, come here. Amiat, Amiat, Jasiat, come here. Amiat, Amiat, Jasiat, come here.
Sovolov. Thank you very much. We're very pleased to be here this morning. Um, you'll have to bear with me. I didn't prepare any remarks. I, um, I hadn't decided until just a few minutes ago that I was going to dance. Our, we've had a tragedy in our family, and so it's been kind of hard. But I'd like to welcome the Heidelberg dancers from Heidelberg and to thank them very much for the Kaigani Haida Society for allowing us to join them in their dancing. Our Haida Society consists of a group of concerned Haidas living here in the Juneau area. We're concerned about our children. We want our children to have the opportunity to learn about the Haida culture. So we formed the Haida Society and we plan to teach them as much as we can about the culture, the art, the language. We're just very happy to be here today and we thank you very much. Our next uh, speaker will be Esther Nix. Esther, one of our senior citizens. Di taulen lasis, ayat di kud ngai kinas istu tleng an skilak, king it tleng hahat estan singu tleng an skilak, tamano di kud ngai last istu tleng an skilak, hawa kudal hawa. I am so very happy this evening that we can be with you folks and although we are in the minority you have included us in your uh, performances and we're glad to take part and I'm thanking you very much she has more to say <laughs> Di kud ngai kinast istu, gus gusus anan skano di ent kasis teng, es lu kum teman tuju keng an slu di hil keng, eighty years kaslu, next October kaslu hus lu today di na hidden sa, wak ananu it, gus ananu, aku nastu kin ateng isti teng it four kas terai skan. Alice is can, Anas is can slap. Do you cute the nang? Or can a partner go? Do you can partner go? Is an hang kagas can anu? It good, good an do you? It an kas is das can anu? He knew it. He didn't. How ah? How ah? How ah? Good out. I just can't help but say a few words because I am so very happy this evening. More so because you folks have included us. When we get to be at this age, we do foolish things. Some of us are hard to hear. Eyesights are getting poor. Sometimes you get real mad at each other, but still we're the first ones that go to every gathering that goes on in Heidelberg. This is uh, Esther's speech. Again, I thank you very much. <laughs> Now I'd like to add a few words of my own. <clears throat> For uh, two years, the senior citizens of Heidelberg have been very busy raising money. Rummage sales, bingo, pool tabs, and so forth. And uh, <clears throat> we had to raise money because uh, our share of paying down on a new van is $5,000, which we were able to take care of before we left. And then we had a few don donations from Sea Alaska, Haida Corporation, the IRA, that enabled us to make this trip. Now we earned this trip and we have no regrets. We are happy here to be, uh, to be with you and to take part. My granddaughter, Lisa Lang, she's working at Sea Alaska office. 
She called me and she was so excited. She says, Grandma, I'm so excited you folks are coming. I know you folks are gonna do good. I said, honey, <clears throat> you know, in the fall time, salmon, when they get real old, their skin turns white. They have a hard time swimming up uh, the stream. And that's the way uh, our group is. They call them chin chingai. That means old fish. <laughs> Although we're, it's hard for us to uh, maneuver around sometimes, still in spirit we are with you and very happy and we love you and especially we wouldn't have missed the Hawaiian performance for anything. We really enjoyed everything that we have witnessed so far. And just bear with us and want to thank uh, Mr. Loss, I call him, Ross Sobolov. His uh, grandfather was an Irishman <coughs> living in Hokan, one of the original Haida villages. And he operated uh, stores there. The Haidas, I guess, way back couldn't pronounce their R's, so they always called him Mr. Loss. So that's what we call uh, young Ross now, Mr. Loss. <laughs> <laughs> we, and uh, we are so grateful to him for coming to our rescue by including his uh, Haida group to take part. And uh, there's only two young people with us. That's our drummer here. Her name is uh, Tracy Nix. Her grandfather was John Wallace. His, Haida, uh, his name was uh, Sadut, belonged to the Kosk ID clan. And uh, <clears throat> Then uh, one of the young boys that's with us, he's quite young. He's also a descendant of Chief uh, Sanchat of uh, Kassan. So we are proud that they are taking part with us. I'm only sorry that our school children couldn't come because they really know the songs just like Ross's groups does. They knew the stories and uh, Haida night, they told a lot of Haida stories over the mic and little kids and they did perfect. Their dancing and singing was perfect. But the uh, Chins Inga group will try our best. Thank you. Our first song is just a dance song. Everybody will dance. Uh -huh. <laughs> was traced down to Nia Bay. And uh, we were noted as a belligerent month of, of uh, Haida's. We had big, big canoes, it was made out of cedar and mass around Masset and that area there. So uh, my great, great grandmother came from uh, Nia Bay. We were at Kassan at that time. And uh, our group here is referred to as the five tribes of Haida's. Nobody knows anything about them except that they were around Heidelberg during the flood. And when the flood occurred, they don't say it rained all day, all night or 40 days. They say the tide kept coming in. 
That was something that was uh, supernatural, as it uh, states in the Bible. So uh, when we uh, formed our organization, or the Heiders moved into Heidelberg, we were at first at uh, Masset, Masset, B.C. And during a big flood out there and uh, a famine, there was a fish famine, so they, uh, people put up uh, kidneys of the shark up in the trees, and the boys would come around with their bows and arrows and shoot at them just to see them pop. So pretty near there was almost a, a feud or a war over that. So the hiders, a group of them that were on North Island, that is our hiders, could look across and see the land that they came from. They were carried out there during the flood. So during this the flood, when there was uh, so much trouble, they decided to come back. And they had uh, big rafts, uh, 27 rafts, I think it was for our group. They came across and they got lost in the fog. And one group landed in uh, Cape Shacken, and another group landed in uh, Cape Nizan. There the, the people spread out, and uh, during the smallpox uh, that uh, killed so many people off, was this, that our group was uh, cut right down to uh, practically what we are now. So uh, when the when the uh, canoe was given to a first governor here in Alaska, uh, one of our chiefs, McCassan, went up and talked to him, and he said, we are giving you this uh, war canoe and this uh, totem pole. You can see them in Sitka. But if you do not keep your word on lands, we will carve you upside down. That was a hideaway way of showing a person who was d disgraceful. So shortly, that is our history up to what it is now. I uh, thank you. Our next uh, song and dance is uh, fast, and we call it the shaman dance. This is a dog, uh, dogfish uh, song. This occurred out at Massett years and years ago. In the olden days, there's no outhouses, no bathrooms, so people would take care of nature either down the beach or up the woods. And one day a man went down the beach and he heard a death chant coming from behind a big boulder. He stayed where he was until he memorized the song. Then when he went around the uh, boulder, there was a huge shark thrashing around in a shallow pool where it was, and it knew it was going to die. So it's, it was singing a death song for itself. <clears throat> so this man proceeded to uh, work it down to the, the uh, water. He had a hard time because the shark was big, but he finally succeeded and he got it to the water. And then he adopted the shark as his clan crest. <clears throat>
Jackson of Cake has a story to tell. He just now informed me. Tommy? I could, I just couldn't help but tell and share this story with you folks. As I was listening to Victor Haldane reviewing some of the stories about the flood, my brother-in-law, Moses Ingram, out at Mass BC, was telling a story about the people that was among them. And he said, those people were so awful. Fight. You just can't get along with those people. So the Haidas out there at Masset got sick and tired of them. They got a hold of a sea lion stomach. And you know, you can blow that thing just real, real big. And it holds quite a few people in there. So the Masset people said, Let's toss them in that sea lion stomach and let us get them to drift, set, set them adrift. And that's what they did. And after that, Mass had settled down to be a peaceful people because they just couldn't uh, put up with this crazy people. So, the sea lion's stomach drifted. It finally hit shore, and they could feel from the inside of the stomach, it's a rocky place. Swells were big. They were, they were being tossed around inside of it. So they just stayed in there. One day, they could feel it. it was nice and peaceful water. And they could feel the gravel. So they decided, well, we better get out and see where we are. So they did. And they liked the place. So they decided, well, we better settle here. And those people have to, became known as Kekon. They became known to be a people of cake, Alaska. And I'm one of them. They couldn't put up with us, these hiders. We were a little bit too crazy for them, so they throw us in the sea lion stomach. I don't know if this story is true, but I take it from my brother, it's true. Thank you. Next one will be the, the next one will be the Eagle Dance. Ross. to uh, cut some of our uh, songs short and save some for this evening. The next will be uh, the dedication songs. All the uh, Athlona children will step out and uh, dance. <coughs> Thank you. 
The Ayada clan originated from Kasan, and there's very few of them left. So we'll ask uh, them to step forward. Yada's children. Under the Raven, the subdivision clan, the Yakalana's children, please step forward. Yakalana's children, step forward. I guess slave uh, women would rock uh, high-class babies to sleep, and this is a lullaby song for you, Lana's babies. Sister uh, Esther Nix has her uh, favorite cocktail song. That's where I draw the line. Come on, Esther. <laughs> usually have a little nip before I sing this cocktail song. <laughs> but today I guess I won't. Hawan hu tai adigula kandanu wan wa khases asigasundas lu tritwik akan kusla singai khasandu ya before we do our next song, I'd uh, just like to ask the members of the Kaigani Haida group to please step forward. We're so very honored that a group of uh, our elders from Heidelberg came up to uh, be in the celebration and 
we're really honored to host them and we don't want to step apart from them but we want to have our group come forward so we could uh, show our respect for the elders who taught us all that we know. The theme of this celebration is uh, its survival. Sometimes when I first thought of that, it kind of hit me as, as kind of negative. But uh, then I thought of a phrase that I'd heard before. It's, it's coming in on a wing and a prayer. And it's a, it's a positive idea. It's, it's appropriate because all of us nations here, we believe that the raven is our creator. And so we're coming in on that wing. And we mention a prayer because we're all people of very deep spirit and uh, our people have always had a very strong spiritual background. And the phrase coming in and on a wing and a prayer, it, it, it meant a victory, it meant a triumph for our people. There's a lot of our elders here who came from a time they've told me, they said, you know, it's good to be a native now. And it hasn't always been that way. Sometimes it's been very hard and some of our people even had had such a rough time that they began to take on those bad feelings themselves. And so today when we get ready to celebrate, we really do have a lot to celebrate. And uh, it's this uh, time when we can be together and, and time when we can look at survival not as, not as just getting by, but as a real victory. And when I see my elders here, I think of that victory. And when I see some of this fine, very old regalia here. Again, I think that that to me is what survival is, and it's a triumph, and I thank you very much. When I spoke about uh, Ross Sobolov, I forgot to mention about his ancestor. He comes from a Hokan, and his grandfather, Haida name was Hatsawun. He was Chief Thomas Skulka, and that's where uh, Ross and his brother and sister originate. Um, the next one is uh, a love song by Tracy Nix. Some of you that have been uh, down our area, Copper Mountain, the, I think it's a Tlingit name, Khunach. And at one time, there's thousand miners living there. And this woman, she's a, she was a great grandmother of the Edenshaw family. When she was going into the bay of Copper Mountain, it's a long, long bay. They say she stood up, she bound her head up, and then she hailed, she hailed the, the uh, camp. And she's singing a song about how she was anticipating seeing her lover and how much she liked the place. And she was really so happy that she was going to meet her lover. What was the next one? Oh. Next is a chant. Hey! 
all the uh, communities know the Chinook song on the hay. We're going to cut some of the numbers off till this evening, and we'll call on Irma Lawrence to lead in How Great Thou Art. Irma. Mistress, I think there's a little error in doing the Lord's Prayer, reading the How Great Thou Art. Kaganda, dan ya kiri. 